Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Tuesday, September 30th, 2008. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S., 4.30 p.m. in London, 12.30 p.m. in Bermuda, and 9.30 a.m. in Mexico City. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. On this day in history, in 1938, British, French, German, and Italian leaders agreed in Munich that Nazi Germany could occupy the Sudetenland section of Czechoslovakia. Later that night, this picture was taken at London's Heathrow Airport. British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain arriving home, holding up the Munich Agreement, saying this is peace in our time. Eleven months later, World War II began. We have a lot of breaking stories today. Um, this just came in from Insurance Insider. Uh, they're saying that Standard & Poor's has downgraded four cat bonds guaranteed by Lehman Brothers, signaling further contamination of the financial sector crisis in the insurance-linked securities market. Tranches of Allstate's Willow Re, Catlin Managed Newton Re, Aspen Re's Ajax Re, and Munich Re's Carillion Bonds, which were placed on Credit Watch negative on the 15th of September, have now been downgraded to junk status. According to, Lehman, uh, according to Standard & Poor's, make sure I have this right, the bonds which had Lehman Brothers special financing as the swap counterparty and Lehman Brothers holdings as a swap guarantor prior to the firm's demise total over $584 million in catastrophe capacity. Standard & Poor's says that it looks at the weak link of the parties to the issuance. That, of course, is Lehman Brothers. They went on to say that unless someone continues to pay the interest or principal at maturity on these bonds, somewhere along the line, these bonds will go to D and trigger a default, which would require that the bonds be unwound and then settled. So that's obviously a, uh, a blow for the Insurance Link Securities Group. Reinsurance Magazine is reporting this morning that Bermudan rivals Arch Capital and Validus have been tipped as possible buyers of Transatlantic Re. Transatlantic Re, of course, came under the spotlight after AIG, which owns 59% of the company, uh, ran into its own problems. Uh, both Transatlantic and Validus declined to comment. Arch could not be reached for comment. Also, the Reinsurance Magazine is reporting that energy insurer Taurus has said that it has entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Praetorian Specialty Insurance Company um, from Praetorian Insurance Company, which in turn is a member company of QBE The Americas for an undisclosed amount of cash. Praetorian Specialty Insurance is licensed as an ENS insurer in 42 states in the U.S., the CEO of Taurus is saying that this is an important first step uh, for us in our strategic expansion in the U.S. specialty business. Uh, no comment yet from QBE. This, of course, is the company that uh, Rod Fox was involved with that about 18 months or so ago was sold to QBE, so they've turned this over pretty quickly. And news from Hong Kong. This is uh, more bad news for the Chinese with the melamine problem with the, uh, the baby's milk, which is now spread into dairy products in general. Uh, Unilever is recalling four batches of Lipton milk tea sold in Hong Kong after finding traces of the melamine in the product. Uh, Unilever described it as a precautionary measure. This came a day after British confectioner Cadbury said that it has recalled all of its Chinese-made candy products after preliminary tests showed that they contain trace amounts of melamine. So the uh, scandal continues to widen. The Cadbury products apparently were exported as far away as Australia and Taiwan and Christmas Island. So uh, we'll have a little story later in the broadcast about China as well. The economic update, everybody knows what happened yesterday. The great bailout bill failed. The stock market then went down 777 points. Uh, the Nikkei index went down this morning. The Hong Kong uh, went down this morning. And this morning at 8.45 a.m., President Bush once again traipsed out to the Rose Garden. Here's a picture of him uh, giving uh, some assurance to the world market, saying that no matter what happens legislatively, the U.S. government will have to deal with this and the Congress will deal with it. Uh, the Jewish holiday is today and began last evening at dusk. 
uh, Congress is going to be back in session on Wednesday and probably will have to deal with this on Thursday. The Senate is already making moves and has indicated that they're going to pass their version of the bill anyway by the end of the week. Uh, the stock market in the U.S. has rebounded and it is up about 245 points now after yesterday's disastrous day. Uh, the European exchange has uh, closed marginally upward as well. So it looked as if Asia bore the uh, reaction brunt to what happened in the U.S. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and see what happens. In insurance news in Texas, the state's second largest home insurer, Allstate, will pay the most in the State Windstorm Association's initial round of assessments. Allstate will fork over $65.5 million to the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association. This is the insurer of last resort that sells coverage to coastal homes that can't find it elsewhere. The association then, of course, by law, can turn to insurance companies that do business in Texas to help it pay claims once it runs out of money. The $2.1 billion in, uh, dollars that the association had on hand included a billion and a half in reinsurance as well as $370 million in cat reserve funds that was all wiped out by Hurricane Ike. The amount companies are required to pay is a function of how much business they do statewide and on the coast. Nearly 60% of the $430 million assessment will be paid by the state's five biggest insurers, all state, state farm, farmers, USAA, USAA, and travelers. Some companies such as Lumberman's Underwriting Alliance and National American Insurance Company will pay as little as $4,200 each. American International Group said today that it has injected about 91 billion yen or about 870 million U.S. into its overseas unit in Japan, Alico Japan, to stabilize that firm's capital after the value of AIG shares held by Alico Japan declined sharply. According to an AIG spokesman, Alico Japan, the wholly owned unit of AIG life insurance company, holds 38 million AIG shares as part of its capital. As a result of the recent dip in AIG shares, Alico Japan required a capital boost. Both AIG and Alico Japan officials declined to comment on the condition of Alico Japan's mainstay insurance operations and policy contracts. According to a spokesman in Tokyo, we should be able to provide more details when we report our fiscal first half earnings. Another AIG News Lexington Insurance Company, an AIG subsidiary, has agreed the terms with Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway for reinsurance cover. Berkshire Hathaway's National Indemnity Company will provide contingent property reinsurance cover to Lexington's real estate portfolio, as well as policies with limits over $250 million, to policies with home foreign exposure, and to the property sectors of the majority of Lexington's homeowner business. Berkshire Hathaway now stands behind Lexington if it sustains a covered loss. This deal obviously will help Lexington secure continued business with its major customers who require that their carrier has a top brand rating. The IG's credit rating was slashed to a single A. Berkshire Hathaway has a triple A. Billionaire investor Warren Buffett, who owns Berkshire Hathaway, is also expected to keep an eye on AIG subsidiaries in case they do come up for sale to pay for AIG's debt. Homeowners who live along rivers in the U.S. can breathe a little easier. The U.S. Senate on Saturday approved legislation that includes a provision to extend authorization for the current National Flood Insurance Program until March 6, 2009. If the provision had not passed Congress, the NFIP would have expired tonight. The provision was included in legislation that provides interim appropriations for government agencies pending further action in the next Congress. The House passed the same bill Thursday. Some insurance industry trade groups voiced grudging support for the extension, although they said they had hoped Congress would have completed work on legislation that would have extended the program as well as reformed it by this time. Meanwhile, it appears that no further action on several other bills of interest to the industry will occur, and they'll have to be reintroduced next year. These include legislation that would have created an Office of Insurance Information within the Treasury Department, a bill that would modernize and simplify regulation of the surplus lines insurance industry, and another that would recreate the National Association of Registered Agents and Brokers. Does it add that on to the work they have to do when they come back in January? Some uh, estimates now from some of the 